Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. I apologize that it's been a few weeks since I actually filmed anything. There's just been a lot of stuff going on in addition to the quarantine and coronavirus, so I just haven't been in a place to film recently. But here we are. Before I start actually reviewing the book that I'm here to talk about today, I wanted to mention that I do have a new profile picture, and it is art created by Rhea from the book Finch. She was doing, like, little mini portrait kind of things for friends and including symbols and stuff from their life or the books that they enjoy. So I have a little profile picture with me, my dog Violet, the Wheel of Time symbol, and then a fool's cap and a little dagger. So me, Violet, the Wheel of Time, and the Realm of the Elderlings. I love it. I haven't filmed since that was done, so I just wanted to throw that out there. And now for the actual like, point of this video, which is to talk about Lobezona by Romina Garber. I won an advanced reading copy of this book in a Goodreads giveaway from the publisher, and I had gone ahead and read it because originally it was supposed to be coming out in May 2020. However, with everything that's going on, I believe it has been pushed on to August for its release date. But I just finished it, so I want to talk about it. This is a YA urban paranormal kind of fantasy book that features witches and werewolves and is heavily influenced by Argentinian mythology and folklore. This book is also own voices for the Latinx representation, and it does include LGBTQ plus side rep. This story follows a teenage girl named Manu who is living in Miami with her mother and another woman who's kind of like a grandmother figure, though she is not literally her grandmother. And they are in the United States illegally as illegal immigrants. One of Manu's distinguishing features is her golden eyes and how her pupils are kind of sun-shaped. So in addition to being an illegal immigrant here in the United States and not being able to be out a whole lot for those reasons, she really can't go out in public because those things are so noticeable about her with her eyes and that striking appearance. So that would draw attention to her and then that really would kind of put them in a bad place because of their immigration status. So Manu's mother goes out and works and everything and she is kind of homeschooled by this grandmother figure and she pretty much just stays indoors all the time, has never really had friends because any friends that she did have would come to notice her eyes and it would just become a big thing. And Manu doesn't know much about her dad because she believes that her dad was involved in some sort of illegal or illicit activity in Argentina where they, she is originally from, where she was born, and that they had to flee from Argentina because of his involvement in certain things and she thinks that their family is looking for her. And another interesting aspect is that for some reason Manu's period always comes with the full moon and then when that comes she's like knocked out asleep for a couple of days and she takes these pills that her mom gives her for what her mom calls lunaritis, which is basically her issue with like her period coming around the full moon and like the intensity and everything. And then obviously something's gonna go wrong because that's how book plots work and it kind of goes from there. I have started recently reviewing and talking about books in a different way where I talk about different aspects and give them their own rating and then kind of combine those to create an overall star rating. So I'm gonna go through from my least favorite aspect to my favorite aspect and give you my star rating at the end, the overall. I gave this book 3.5 stars for the plot itself. I did really enjoy the plot actually, but the first half of the book and the second half of the book are so distinct that they feel like different stories. And I enjoyed both of them, but again, there's this separation thing that happens where the plot kind of diverges in a sense, right in the middle of the book and it just didn't flow exactly to the point where it felt like one story. It felt like two stories in one book. The first half of the book feels almost like contemporary magical realism and then the second half feels more like that urban paranormal fantasy. I gave the writing and the style itself four stars. I really enjoyed it. It was very easy to read and I would be interested in seeing what that looks like as far as the actual like finished copy. 
I really liked Garber's writing style and didn't have issues with it. There are particular sentiments that I thought she expressed very well, but overall, even though I enjoyed it, it wasn't my very favorite writing. It was just something I definitely liked. I also gave the characters four stars. I really liked Manu as a protagonist, and I liked that even the side characters felt like they were kind of fleshed out in the fact that they were layered. Um, a couple of particular characters that I can't exactly say a whole lot about because they come in part of the way through the story. But even if they seem like they're not particularly likable or there is something about them that you find off-putting, there is usually some sort of reason for it or at least like a rationale where even if you're not totally on their side with them, you kind of get where they're coming from. So I enjoyed that and that the characters all felt like real people. And then I gave the world building in this book four stars. The Septimus as a people, who I can't really say a whole lot about, are really cool but not without flaws, which I enjoyed because societies, even magical societies, particularly if they're predicated on a specific culture, are going to be influenced by the flaws within that culture. I also really liked seeing how Argentinian mythology and folklore played into the world building. I loved that part. Parts of this almost felt like Argentinian Harry Potter. <laughs> I think I would have liked it a little bit more if it had been more fleshed out. Like how I mentioned that the book feels like two different books in one, I think that if more had been integrated as far as the world building in the first half, that I would have loved it even more because I did actually love the world building, I just wanted a bit more of it. Once we get into the second half of the book, there's plenty, but I just, I want more. It makes me very excited though to read the second book. And then finally my favorite aspect of this book was the themes that were presented. This is a very theme heavy book which is probably part of the reason that I did also enjoy the style because there are particular sentiments that I think are expressed quite well. Themes include immigration obviously but also the sense of belonging and how that impacts a person and how it impacts their ability to develop and form relationships later in life whether or not they have that sense of belonging and whether or not it's something they've experienced previously in their life. And then something that I didn't necessarily realize was gonna be a thing in this book that I really enjoyed was the feminist aspects within the theme specifically and this idea of breaking a cultural mold. Like acknowledging the good of your culture and enjoying it and loving it in what is good about it but also saying hey just because things have always been done this way doesn't mean that it's the best way and it doesn't mean that we can't like evolve beyond the restrictions that have been placed on us. I really enjoyed that. I find it difficult to talk about the actual world building and the later plot of this book even though I mentioned that they're so distinct because it comes in like between a third and halfway through the book and I don't want to spoil things because I feel like that's quite a bit of the way into the book to really dive into it in re a review. Like, I feel like that becomes spoilery. I will say in regards to the feminism and how that actually kind of interacts with the world building, that is something that I enjoyed because this magical world that you will experience in the second half of the book is very gendered. Seeing world building interact with themes is something that I adore, <laughs> apparently. Anyway, I gave Lobezona an overall rating of four stars. I really loved a lot of it and I can't wait to read the second book. I don't know how many books are going to be in this Wolves of No World series. It might just be a duology which I could see and I would be fine with, but I love this world. It is so cool. Comment down below if you have read Lobazona and let me know whether or not you enjoyed it or what your favorite aspect of the world or the book was. And if you haven't read it, are you interested? Had you previously heard of it? Are you interested in it now? Let me know. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't, if you would like to be subscribed to my channel. And yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day. And until next time, bye.